Hello, everybody. I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. We are watching this the day after Thanksgiving, and I hope that you just had a wonderful day. Before we get started today, I just want to let you know how thankful I am for each and every one of you. You know, I've been making videos for quite a few years now, and through my journey of making this vi these videos, I have come to know so many of you on a very personal level. Like, we're not just acquaintances or internet friends. I feel like we're family, and I just want to say I am so thankful for y'all. And here recently, I've had lots of new followers come and join along in these videos and in this sewing and quilting journey, and I just want to say I'm thankful for you. Thank y'all so much for being here and just hanging out with me and having fun making these videos. I appreciate y'all so much. I hope you take the rest of this weekend just to relax <laughs> and uh, enjoy your full bellies. And are y'all going to do any Black Friday shopping? Do you know of any good sales? All right. I have a little bit of a disappointing news for you. <laughs> um, mm, I've been totally distracted today, y'all. And you're going to see why here in just a second. But once again, I started sewing my block and realized I never hit record. That's happening quite a bit here lately. I wonder if that means I have too much on my plate. But today is a good distraction. I've been making bread today, y'all. My house smells wonderful. <laughs> it smells so good in here. And uh, so let me just show you the reason why we're picking up at the sewing machine. When you see my pieces for the first time today, let me show you why. So this is why I was distracted, y'all. <laughs> I filmed half my video without hitting record because I was watch too busy watching the timer of my bread. Let's turn on the light. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? Yummy. It has two minutes left to go oh my goodness that smells so good so look at there doesn't that look so good oh my goodness it smells amazing so really the hardest part about baking this bread is waiting <laughs> waiting for it to cool off to cut into it and to be really honest, a lot of the times we don't wait for it to completely cool off. But we want to make some good sandwiches with this bread, so we'll be letting it cool off completely. Now here's a good question for all of you experienced bread makers. I've only been doing this for a, quite some time. And although my bread has gotten much better, see this one is taller than that one. I'm wondering if I didn't need this one long enough. I don't know. <laughs> it has a little hole on the top. See that? I bet it still tastes delicious though. So there you go. That's the reason why I was so distracted today. <laughs> Doesn't it look yummy? Okay, let's get back to sewing. So y'all please forgive me. That is the reason why I was so distracted in filming and I got all the way to the sewing machine and started sewing some pieces and did not even realize I had not hit record. So I'm so sorry. Uh, we're going to pick up. I'm going to talk about the pattern and all that stuff and walk you through what I did to get over to the sewing machine in just a second. I also want to let you know, see the blue box? We're not going to be coming and doing a video for the next two Fridays. We're going to, today is the last video until December the 15th. Okay. Harlan is having surgery on his knee next week. He has a torn meniscus in two different places. So they're going to go in and sew those tears back together. He's been in quite a bit of pain for quite some time now. <laughs> And so his surgery is finally next week. And so I am going to be nurse Lisa for a little while. And then I imagine once he starts to feel a little bit better and I can leave him unattended for a little bit, 
then I'm going to have to come in here and so, 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 because believe it or not, Christmas is just a few weeks away, right? And I have quite a few projects under a deadline that I'm going to have to catch up. So we're going to stop after today. We'll pick back up on the 15th and I'm going to show you the applique we're making on the 15th here in just a second. The angel block. Isn't she just so cute? I love her. Now, if you took this angel block and you made four of them, you could make a centerpiece quilt like this. Wouldn't that be so cute, right? I think, let's talk about this applique for a second, right? If you are someone who considers them a scrap quilter, right? You love using scraps, either in patchwork or applique or paper piecing. You love using scraps. You could do each one of the angels with different fabrics and make her scrappy angel. Wouldn't that be so cute? And I also know that many of you make projects on consignment for uh, clients, right? Memory quilt items. How great would this applique be made with a loved one's clothing? And each one of the angels uh, are different items of clothing. Wouldn't that be so pretty? Now this is just a centerpiece, right? With uh, sashing that was cut at one and a half inches. The little sashing cornerstones were cut at one and a half by one and a half inches. And that is a border that finishes at three inches. You would cut your borders at three and a half inches. I do not have a written pattern for this, y'all. This is just a design I came up with in EQ8. Um, so there is no written pattern for that. But if you jot down those little measurements that I gave you, you would be able to make a centerpiece that looks just like this. Now, I just gave that bird a box. <laughs> but you're gonna hear him in the background. I had someone who was very upset on one of my videos, and it was an old video, but it must have been her first time watching it last week. And I saw a comment and she was fussing at me a little bit about the background noise. <laughs> so I try to make you aware when there is background noise now because she thought it was in her house, but it wasn't. It was in my house. Anyway, Harlan and his uh, buddy from down the street are outside doing crossbows at Target's, right? And the bird is upset because he can hear them, but he cannot see them. I just gave him a box. You would think that he would be okay, but no. He wants to be where the action is. So I apologize if you hear him. Angel centerpiece. I think if you made her into a whole quilt, that that would be stunning. Now, when we come back on December the 15th, we are doing a winter applique. We are going to be making a snowflake. Now, for those of you with cutting machines, less than a minute, you'd have this snowflake cut out, right? For those of you without cutting machines, I'm going to show you two different ways to cut it out. One way brings us back to our childhood and cutting paper snowflakes, <laughs> right? And I think it will simplify cutting out this snowflake. But yeah, we're doing this raw edge applique snowflake December the 15th. So if you haven't yet subscribed, you might want to do that. Hit the bell, all notifications, so you get notified when I put the thumbnail up. That was a lot just to get down to me showing you the PDF for today. <laughs> I have a feeling like things will be much calmer after Christmas. Do you ever feel like that? Like you just have so much going on, right? Let's take a look at the PDF for this week. The tracing templates are on two pages, right? We have the little colored thumbnail that I've started adding. But I'm doing totally different colors, <laughs> but I did include that. If it, give, if it helps you visualize, you know, colors to pick out, that's there. These pieces have been mirror imaged, so you're ready to trace uh, using fusibles, right? 
And then you'll notice on the second page, I did give you a little face and hair and a halo to trace if you need like a tracing guide for those details. Um, let's talk about the hair for a second, right? Because I have been contemplating since I drew this two weeks ago. <laughs> And originally, when I drew it out like this, my intention was to do hand stitching. I was going to do a little back stitch by hand right through that straight line. And then with some long straight stitches and some DMC thread, I was going to do the little crosses. And that would represent her hair. I already know today I do not have the time to do hand stitching. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> So I think I'm going to pick a decorative stitch in my sewing machine. I know that I have one that does uh, little crosses like that, but I don't know necessarily that that's what I'm going to pick. But a decorative stitch would certainly save you a lot of time to do the little hair detail without hand stitching. But I wanted to talk about, because there's probably a hundred different ways you could do the hair, right? But I did want to throw that out there. My initial thought was to hand stitch it. But today I'm going to do some machine stitching with a decorative stitch. I will probably do a little tiny satin stitch for the halo. The eyes, I think if you had, you know those little tiny, tiny buttons that you can sew on to doll clothing, right? If you make doll clothing for Barbies and whatnot. Or if you make little tiny teddy bears and you make clothes for your teddy bears, do you know those little tiny buttons? Those would be adorable as the eyes. I really do think so. Or you could just do like a satin stitch by hand, really close together and just do two eyes that way. And again, another back stitch by hand for the mouth. But I think I'm going to do a really tiny satin stitch with the machine because my day is not allowing any hand stitching today. <laughs> so, um, yes, I think that was everything I covered there. So then I brought in the placement guide, right? This has been glued together. All I did is I cut the bottom portion because it's just empty, right? And made it a little bit smaller. To fit on the screen better i used my silicone mat and placed all my pieces now in placing your pieces this week um we're gonna go in, in numerical order with your pieces right so the two feet i laid down first and then three and four were the hands five is the wings and six is the body or the dress of the angel. And that's going to cover the wings, the feet, right? And then you're going to lay down this arm first, piece number seven. And then piece number eight. That's going to cover your hands. And then you can lay down the head, which is piece number nine. And that's just going to cover the raw edge right along through here. And... Those are your pieces for this week. Now I used, and then I feel like I'm saying this twice because I am. Uh, I used a heat erasing pen and drew in the details of the face and an outline of the hair and the halo. And that is still on my block. So you'll see that here in a minute. But, um, because I used lighter fabric, I could see these face details and the hair and the halo. If you're using darker fabrics and you want to use a tracing guide at this point, you might need to use like a light pad or a window to see through your fabrics to trace them on. Or you could just eyeball them and put them into place, right? You could do something totally different instead of what I've drawn here. So those were the steps. <laughs> I know some of y'all are gonna be so disappointed you didn't get to see those pieces fused into place. But then I came over to the sewing machine. 
and I talked about what stitches I was going to use and I picked out a blanket stitch because you know that's one of my favorites and I sewed a blanket stitch until I got one that I really liked and uh, so let's pick back up there. <laughs> the stitch width on my blanket stitch is 2.2 and the stitch length is a 1.6. Okay, now if you like the look of this blanket stitch, see how it's kind of close together, right? If you like the look of that, you might want to start with those settings on a scrap and adjust from there according to your machine and your fabrics and the thread that you're using. Now, I've really loved the blanket stitch uh, because so far I have not done the blanket stitch where I needed to use any kind of stabilizer interfacing on the back side of my work. So that's lovely, right? I do not have anything underneath of this block for this particular part in this stitch. So I have stitched her hands. <laughs> And you can see that I traced her face and the halo and the hair. You can just see it there with a red heat erasing pen. I think that brings us up to where I realized I was not recording. So now we're going to pick back up. And what I'm doing now is I'm stitching the hands and the feet. Those are the lowest two parts of all of this applique. And then I'm going to stop and think about the stitch that I want to use next. I might want to use the same stitch and I might want to change it. I, I am undecided today. So we're going to pick back up and I still have the rest of this foot and this foot to sew before we move on. Okay, don't you just love that little blanket stitch? I'm using a brown thread in both the top and the bobbin. And so it just creates the most perfect darling little outline of these applique pieces. I'm just gonna trim off all these little starter threads. There we go. See, isn't that so cute? So next, I think, you know, I'm going to sew these applique pieces in the same order that you put them down. So I'm going to come up here to the wing. And you know what? I'm not going to change my stitch at all. I'm going to go with the same blanket stitch. 2.2 with the width and a 1.6 with the length. So there's a little outline around that wing. Now, because I love the blanket stitch so, so much, I'm going to continue, continue to use the blanket stitch. And I'm going to sew down the body or the big part of the dress first, and then her two arms. But I do want to make that blanket stitch a little bit different. So I'm going to increase the width a few notches and increase the length a few notches. Now I already know what this is going to look like because I've used this stitch several times and I know, but this stitch is going to be 3.0 in the width and a 2.0 in the length. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit wider and a little bit more spread out than the stitch that I've used for these bottom pieces. All right, I'm going to start right here. It's hard to see because I've used the same fabric, but what's really nice about this stitch and using the brown thread 
is even though I've used the same fabric for all three of these pieces, this stitch is going to outline and separate visually each one of these three pieces. Okay, so just like that, we have separated those pieces so that they all look like individual parts, right? All right, so what I have left to do is to stitch down her head. And I want to go back and do another blanket stitch, but not quite this wide, right? So let's shrink it down. And this time I am going to use just some scraps and test this stitch out. I know I want it to be very small. Okay, we're going back tiny again. So this is the stitch I'm going to use for her head and the width is 1.6 and the length is 1.4, right? And I'm just going to go right around her head and stitch that down. Okay, there is her little head stitched down. I didn't mean to overlap my stitches. See what happens when you overlap where you started. Sometimes you get a little bit of a darker area there, but that's okay, we're gonna go with it. And uh, so now I'm going to pick out a decorative stitch for her hair. And I'm gonna stitch down her halo and her face details. Now I know that with the halo and the mouth, I wanna use a really tall, uh, really small satin stitch, right? So I know I'm gonna need some kind of stabilizer for that because those stitches are so close together. I don't want to pucker up my background with those stitches. So let me go grab, today I'm gonna to use a cutaway, right? I think whenever you're like, should I use a tear away or a cut away? I'm not sure which one would be best. It's always safer to go with the cut away. <laughs> so let me go grab some of that and I'll be right back. Okay, I have just some scraps in a little bin right next to where I sew. So this is some medium weight cut away. I think this will provide some nice support for some really tiny uh, small satin stitches. So let's dial in a satin stitch, right? Let me just 
test out some statin stitches right here. I know that that is way too big. All right, this is gonna be teeny tiny. Now, if you don't have a pre-programmed uh, satin stitch, you could try using a zigzag stitch for this stitch. And my width is a 1.0, and my length is 0.2, which is really tight together. That's why this uh, cutaway is gonna offer some really good support for all of these little needle pokes we're gonna do to the background fabric, right? So I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna just cut myself a piece of this scissors. <laughs> all right. I don't need this great big whole piece. Here's a piece right here. I'm just gonna fit it right up underneath and I'm gonna put it so that it goes right underneath the face and where the halo is going to be. And I'm going to use this one piece for all of that. Actually, if I make it a little bit bigger, I can position it so that it's underneath of the hair and all of that. So let's do that. It's underneath the hair and the, the halo and the face. I feel like the fabric with the heat and bond in this area will provide enough support for whatever decorative stitch I end up using right there. So, but because this background does not have any fabric to support it like the applique, I think the interfacing or the stabilizer underneath will be really helpful. All right, I'm just holding that in place. Once I start stitching, that'll keep the stabilizer from moving around. We're gonna stitch this halo. All right, that is too close for the needle size I'm using. <laughs> I have a larger needle in my machine from doing that binding today. So let me just increase that. Let's try 0.3 for the length. Okay, that worked out pretty good. It's not as close together as I wanted it to be, but sometimes it's not worth uh, fighting whatever your machine is doing. So I just increased that length by just one little dial click and uh, just made it spread out just a little bit further and then it wanted to sew. <laughs> now I'm gonna use that same satin stitch, 1.0 length, 0.3, or no, 1.0 width, 0.3 on the length, and we're gonna do her mouth. There we go, I think that looks great, right? That looks cute. So now let's pick a stitch for this eye. And I have a couple of single stitches that will stitch out a round circle. Do I wanna use that or not? 
I tell you what, I'm not going to waste your time while I'm trying to figure this out. Let me pause the video for a second. Let me go play with a couple of these stitches and then I'll come back when I've decided which one I'm going to use. <laughs> okay, coming back, I've decided for my eyes, I'm going to do something a little bit different, a different shape than the round circle. All right. Um, for my machine, I have a single stitch that stitches out sort of like a star. So I'm sewing with the HZLF600. And in my menu, if you click the heart with the ABC button, <laughs> and then you type in stitch number 18, it's going to stitch out the star. And the settings I'm using is 5.0 on the width and a 5.5 on the length. Now, many of your machines, you might not have this exact star stitch, but you might have like an asterisk stitch, single stitch, uh, that would do your eyes for you. So, you know, I know a lot of us have all of these stitches in our machines and we hardly ever use them. If you don't want to do an o a little round circle for the eyes, check out all of your decorative stitches and experiment with some on a scrap and find one that you like and you could do that for the eyes. All right, I'm going to start right in the middle and we're going to stitch out both of these eyes. I'll see if I can bring you in a little bit closer. All right, that's a little short and squatty. <laughs> I thought it was going to do longer than that. I must have changed it. So she's going to have little, little eyes, little happy, joyous eyes. There we go. <laughs> it's like she's squinting. There we go. There are her eyes. <laughs> that is not what I envisioned, but we're going to go with it. <laughs> I also forgot to change my presser foot. When choosing different uh, decorative stitches in your sewing machine, it is really important to pay attention because it's going to tell you either on your machine or in your sewing machine manual the right foot you need to be using for these stitches and I really should be using a different foot for this stitch. Check your sewing machine manuals. <laughs> oh, it's like she's blinking. Okay, so let me figure out the stitch I want to use next. I know I want to do the one, it looks like it has little bows. So we're gonna change to one, two, three, delete, yes, okay. One, two, three, and then we're going over here, and then number 23. All right, this stitch is going to look like little bows. See that? Isn't that so cute? That's the stitch I'm going to do for her hair. Now I always have a hard time when I'm doing some kind of running stitch like this that already has curves in it. 
I have a hard time figuring out where in that stitch I need to stop to do curvy bits. So my hair might be a little wonky. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I'm doing it's little bows. If you have the same sewing machine as I do, the HZL F600. If you look in the middle of all your decorative stitches, there's the one, two, three button. And then it's the bottom right on the dial that looks like it's got a leaf with a vine in the middle. And then stitch number 23. If you have that same sewing machine and you just follow those prompts that I gave you, you will find it. It'll make sense. So already I know I'm off my mark. <laughs> the awesome thing about the heat erase markers is that they disappear. But I can also tell you, like, you can just start seeing where I'm stitching. And her hair is going to be really hard to see with the color of thread I'm using. Well, that was easier said than done. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I don't use a lot of my decorative stitches for doing things like this, where I want to follow an exact line, right? Uh, I have a hard time knowing where is that curvy line? Which direction am I going next? <laughs> so you can see I'm way off the line in several places, but Here's the good part. We're going to bring it over here. I'm going to heat up my iron and we're going to erase that red line. And no one will ever know that we just did our own little thing, right? Let's come on over here to the pressing board. She is super cute. In this light, you can just make out her hair a little bit. Maybe I should have used uh, a way darker thread than that, right? <laughs> Perhaps. We're just going to take this and get rid of all of the red marks underneath. Now, if I was feeling brave, which today I'm not, <laughs> I would go back over this with that same decorative stitch several times and do several strands of hair, right? And I think the more strands I did, especially on her dress, the more it might show up, right? There we go. So all the markings that I had have disappeared. In her eyes, they look so cute. <laughs> she's, just, she's just so happy, right? <laughs> Now that stitch, you know what I think I could do to make it stick out just a little bit more? Not so much in this area, cause you see it over there, right? But over here, I feel like I'm gonna take my Micron pen and I'm just going to shadow that stitch just a little bit. And see if that doesn't make it stand out just a little bit more 
over top of her dress. That, see, that's helping a lot, right? You can see that better now. There we go. And I don't know that this was totally necessary, but why not? <laughs> There we go. I feel like I can see that a lot better now. And it doesn't look totally, totally different than this stitch over here, right? It just, that just helps your eye see it on this busier fabric over here. So there we go, y'all. There is my angel. So all I have left to do really is to come back in here and trim away some of this cutaway, right? And you would just do that with a pair of scissors. And I'm going close to, but not cutting into those stitches. And everything that uh, we don't cut away would stay in there forever, right? This is not like a tear away, which would eventually uh, end up dissolving whatever you left in there, right? It would fall apart through washing eventually <laughs> but this is going to stay in there and help support these stitches now on the other side you can just see this cutaway through this tea stained muslin right you can see that but when you layer it with some batting that just goes away so if you're looking if you're watching and you're like i like the way cutaway works, but that scares me because I don't want you, I, I don't want to see that in my project. Well, watch this. Let's just pretend that this is some quilt batting, right? And we're layering our project. That just sort of blends right in there, right? And so you don't have to worry about being able to see too much the cutaway that you leave behind there. So in case you were wondering about that. All right, everybody, I would say uh, I promised to get my act together and to film a whole complete video of fusing all my pieces when we return. But I don't like to make promises that I know I might not be able to keep. <laughs> There's my angel. I think she's so cute. Uh, I know many of you are following along in this series and you're making these blocks uh, right alongside of me. And you're sharing them over on the creative crew. That is like the highlight. Like when I finally sit down to relax in the evening. That's one of my favorite things that I look forward to every day. Is just scrolling through creative crew. And seeing all the things that you've been doing. So it's been a lot of fun for me to see your appliques as you sew, on, sew them up. So if you want to. No pressure, but we would love to see. So you can share your, your work over on the creative crew. All right, everybody. I am off to go make some ham sandwiches with that delicious bread that I showed you earlier. My house still smells amazing. <laughs> oh, and y'all would be so proud of me. Uh, yesterday, Harlan roasted a turkey. And uh, we ate some we put some in the fridge and we canned eight pints of turkey meat in the pressure canner it looks amazing it looks so good it's gone into our pantry for down the road right and then we have the broth and all the bones and stuff in the crock pot and we're gonna end up canning some turkey bone broth how exciting is that <laughs> Oh, Y'all, we have been so excited about this canning journey. It's not even funny how excited we are. It's, we're like little kids. Um, but yes, it's really exciting. Who knew being self-sufficient with your food would be so exciting? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And it's very rewarding, right? Um, 
But yeah, we did that yesterday. And I think that's all the updates. I think that's everything. I'm going to certainly miss y'all the next two weeks, but as as fast as the weeks have been flying by, guess what? It'll be December 15th and we'll be snow uh, sewing the snowflake before you know it. So until then, stay safe. Have some personal time unwinding, doing something creative. I feel like that really helps me uh, when I'm super stressed out or have a lot going on. If I can do something that's not work related, but is creative, it's a good unwind for me, right? I hope you find some time to do something like that for yourself. And until the 15th, y'all have fun, okay? And I'll see you over on Creative Crew. I'll post updates. I posted a picture of us at the canner yesterday on Creative Crew. So yeah, bye everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you on the 15th in December.